This is the story of how I have danced with the Lakota. I have eaten with the Lakota. I have prayed with the Lakota in North America. 1964, the last year at school, we were asked to do, or if we wanted, pen friends. Most of the kids in the school said yes and chose Europe. I chose America and sent the first letter off to America. Two weeks later, as I was walking down the stairs, a letter lay on the mat underneath the letterbox, an airmail letter, if you remember what those are. <laughs> I opened the airmail letter and it was well written, it was clear, it was concise, but there was something about it that intrigued me, so I wrote back. Two weeks later, there was another letter in an envelope this time. And it contained the picture of the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in all my life. And for the next three and a half to four years, we wrote to each other every four weeks. Two weeks there, get the reply. Two weeks there, get the reply. Put your hands up if you've been in love from 4,000 miles. It works. You never argue. <laughs> you do it by letter and you are devoted to each other from 4,000 miles. So we'll skip forward to 1968 and the first time I go over to Minnesota to meet this lady. We meet with her parents and they drive us back to her house in St. Paul feed us and that evening we walk to the local school to the playground to the roundabout where we sit on the roundabout and we turn and we face each other and we kiss it's the kiss that's been waiting four years to be made and I kissed she pulled away and for three weeks, we were just about polite. What I didn't know was that from the age of 12, she'd been abused by her father. So anything that came on too strong made a repel. And three weeks after I arrived, we left almost certain that we would never speak to each other again. There was no internet at that time and that's pretty much how it went on except about four weeks later after I came back there was a fair in, in uh, Stratford where they closed the street off and there was a gypsy caravan and after three pints I thought yeah Let's give it a go. Walked up the steps, opened the door into a darkened gypsy caravan. Lady behind the table. Orb on the table. And the lady said, cross my palm with silver, as they did. Half a crown over a palm. She said, make a wish. I closed my eyes and I wished that I could see this lady again. She said, your wish was for someone over the water and it will come true. What a load of rubbish. We tried to, I tried to write, no answer. No internet, no answer. The years passed until 2002 
when I was looking for a website on Google. And I came across an American election at the time. And I wrote underneath four lines, my opinion, and forgot all about it. Until three months later, when I went back into Google, and I typed in the website again, and up came the American election. Underneath were my four lines, and I just glanced to the next image. Are you Ernie Boxall from Attleborough and Eaton? I was your pen friend 36 years ago. We connected again. And we started to connect through Messenger an hour and night for the next couple of years until in 2004 I decided that I would go over again and I started to save my money until 2007 when I did go back to Minnesota and I stayed with a family. During that three weeks there I was talking to her over the kitchen table as I'm talking to you now and she mentioned that her best friend was the daughter of a Lakota chief and he looked after eagles. Now I love birds of prey. What I loved about my scooter was as I went along the Leamington Kenilworth Road and saw the buzzard above the tree with no leaves on I could stop my scooter and just look at the buzzard. Can you imagine if I'd stopped my car to look at the buzzard, knowing that road? I'd stop my scooter, park the scooter, and I'd just watch that buzzard as it stood, as it was perched on the highest branch, just surveying the land waiting for that one moment where it could strike and feed its young. She said, or I said to her, I'd love to meet him. She said, no, he's a very private person. The phone rang. It was her friend inviting us to the gathering of the Lakota people that weekend. Imagine how I felt, elated, except the forecast was for storms that weekend. And I knew it was going to be an outdoor meeting. But we went along and as spirit would have it, it was a blue sky a green field, the Lakota people. I met the chief. I met the people. And then the daughter walked down to the fire. The chief said, let's go to the fire. And we formed a ring around as she took a bowl of sage and sweetgrass lit the bowl and offered a prayer to the east, the west, the north, the south, the sun and the earth. I was crying. Now bear in mind I hate churches. I don't believe in God. But she was saying thank you for the trees, the air, the earth, the water and that's all she was asking for. She came around with the smoke and a feather and doused us all in the smoke. And then the chief said, let's go to the dance ring. We entered the ring from the east and we danced together, left from the west. And then they had a Lakota dance. The young people danced like their forefathers, 
like their ancestors. They danced to the drum and the flute like it mattered. Every tribe has an okayo, a trickster, a joker, and it's often someone who may have a mental or a physical disability. They worship that person because he makes them laugh and he dances in the opposite direction to everyone else. He falls over, he gets up, he chastises no one and he causes the tribe to laugh. But after that we were invited to eat. Food, venison, pot soup, food that I'd never tasted before, but the tribe were together. And the chief started to talk to the whole tribe about the history of the tribe and how they had come to be moved to this part of Minnesota by the army taken away from their lands in the east and moved further west. And the hardships that they had faced. Now, it, do you know Minnesota? Have you heard of Minnesota? You know that the winters go to minus 20, minus 30, and the summers go to 102, 103, 104. And these were the conditions that these people had to endure while they were there. And as I listened to this, the chief came up to me and he presented me with three gifts. One is this t-shirt from the Upper Midawakatan Lakota tribe. Okay, it was marketing. I brought it home with me and I'll talk about the tribe. The other one was the medicine wheel. The four roads of the Lakota people. The white road from the north. The yellow road from the east. The black road from the west. And the red road from the south. And he presented me with this rug that he told me represented the history of the tribe, the earth, the sun, the east and the west, the tribes of the Lakota people, the Hunkpapa, the Midawakatan, the Tetan Sioux, all of the 12 tribes connected through these strands. All the 12 tribes connected to the great battles of the Lakota people. Their battle against the Crow, the Iroquois, and all the way through to the Little Bighorn. All the battles of the Sioux tribe connected to the 12 tribes, connected to the four paths. And finally, the great chiefs of the Lakota people, Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, all the names that we know now, who meant so much to the people of the Lakota. And when he presented these gifts, he talked about the flute and how important it was to the people. 
The history was that as they walked through the forests of Minnesota and the wind blew, they heard the tune from reeds in the trees, the beach, the birch. They cut the trees, they cut the holes, they played the music. When I came home, I decided that that was the instrument I wanted to play. So we went back on to Google and we found out that there was a festival at the end of July, August called Singing Sticks, which was for the guitar, the drum, the didgeridoo and the Native American flute. It was a three-day festival where you went to Northampton. He gave us a block of wood and he asked us to draw an animal and to carve out that animal. And that totem For £90, we built the flute and we ate dinner with the man and he gave me an hour's tuition on the flute and that was four years ago and this has travelled with me and it's a passion now to play the flute. But one final thing I have to tell you is that when the chief presented me with all these gifts, he christened me Coyote. He christened me the Trickster, the Joker. Has that story been true? I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you. <laughs>